good, clean championship fight. Just obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, good luck to both of you. We expect a good one. Joe Tessitore, Tim Bradley, Andre Ward ringside with you. Jamel Herring and Shakur Stevenson. They overlap with colleagues, with trainers in the recent past. They have gotten to know each other so very well. But yet at this moment, right here, right now, is when they actually find out everything about the other. Andre Ward, we have talked about it all week, of asking Jamel Herring, what's the game plan? What's the strategy? And how early do you get to it? What do you expect from him? Jamel Herring's got to show that he can deal with the speed of Shakur and that he can start to get his own jab established and slowly start to push Shakur Stevenson back. I don't like what I'm seeing right now from Jamel Herring. He's sitting back right now trying to box with Stevenson when he should be trying to move forward and get into the chest. Right now, Stevenson is fainting and getting the reaction that he wants from Harry. That is to his advantage with the superior hand speed, overall skill, foot speed. He's the better boxer. Right now, Jamel Herring is confident. He does have a good game plan. And Shakur Stevenson has to make Jamel Herring believe he can't win. And he does that by hitting Jamel early and often and not allowing Jamel Herring to get anything back. There's a body shot right hand from Shakur and then goes with the southpaw jab. I see something very appealing from Shakur Stevenson. You see the grease on his body? Yes. <laughs> He's expecting body shots coming from Jamel Herring. Of course, at the discretion of the referee, pre-fight, Mark Nelson looked him over as to whether or not it's acceptable. It, it shouldn't be. But you can see it. That shimmer and shine off of the bright lights here at State Farm Arena. There Left hand is. comes in from Shakur. Laser focus tried to sweep the right hand across the belt line as well. This is how Shakur Stevens is going to slowly take over this fight. is by power boxing. It's not moving around. He can avoid punches, but he has to make Jamel Herring pay when he misses punches. And again, he has to make Jamel believe that he can't win this fight. And Jamel has to start to pick up the pace because even though this is only the first round, Jamel can, I mean, excuse me, Shakur can do this all night long. All night. Jamel has to start to implement the game plan that he's been talking about all week, which is being the bully. If it stays like this, it's on Shakur's terms, Timmy. All night long, Shakur Stevenson is systematically already breaking down and found his rhythm and found his mark quickly in this first round. And you know that Shakur is getting to Jamel right now because he's got Jamel hesitant to throw. Jamel came out going punch for punch. Now he's got Jamel thinking, trying to figure out what to do next. That's the right hand, that left hand I'm talking about. Jamel doesn't see things coming from that side, and he's walking that way at the moment, getting hit with straight left hands from Shakur Stevenson. The famed trainer of the pound-for-pound pound elite, Terrence Bud Crawford, simply tell Jamel Herring Dre, you got to commit, you got to commit, push him back. And that's bad news for Team Herring when you get that kind of coaching in the after the first round you would think that maybe that would happen after the midway point in this fight so it's not looking good for Jamel Herring right now he can still try to get himself in the fight but Bomack is right he's got to try to commit and sell out you heard of the term speed kills of course <laughs> that's what's going on right now the speed of Shakur Stevenson is too much for Jamel Herring at this moment he has as much speed as anybody in boxing There's no doubt about it we're seeing a little more Boxer puncher and offense out of him, but defensive prowess. This is somebody who has wide margins in outlanding opponents throughout his career at a 3.6 to 1 ratio. And there's the left hand at the end of the combination. Touches the jab to the body as well. Who's the bigger man? Who's the bigger man? Is it Jamel Herring or is it Corey Stevenson? Because he's walking down Jamel Herring already, and it's the second round. 
Well, that's the mistake we make sometimes. We think the taller guy is the stronger guy. The taller guy is the bigger guy. It's not necessarily true. Shakur looks a lot stronger than Jamel Heron to me right now, and a lot thicker. Left hand landing. Good accuracy from Shakur, and then he places it to the body. Had a three-punch combination, couple left hands up top, and then places it to the body. It's a very strong start for the undefeated fighter. That jab right there from Jamel Herring was a half jab, trying to get back to defense all at the same time. It's not a good look, fellas. It's not. Just watch that left hand that come over the top right now. From Shakur. Left hand comes in again. And again. He said it would be his breakout performance. He took criticism for his last performance. People said you could have gotten rid of the guy. You could have pressed the gas pedal a little bit. See that laser focus early on tonight. Tess, every fighter fights with respect. I understand the belts. Yes, they're, you know, they're expected to go in the sport. They're nice to have. But we as fighters, we want to be respected by the people in the industry and the fans. That's what Shakur Stevenson is fighting for right now. And Shakur still got to be smart because Jamel is dangerous with that left hand and he's dangerous with a right hook. And Shakur Stevenson is doing the right thing by marching forward behind the right jab. One, two, backs it up with a southpaw right hook as well. And then from range, back to the jab. Good work. Pinpoint accuracy from Shakur Stevenson with that left hand. Time. Low connect numbers for Shakur Stevenson opponents. Shakur Stevenson's landing 37% of his power punches, the left hand finding its mark. Ted, as soon as that, that, that stat creeps up to about 50, <laughs> we could see a stoppage. That's the power punch percentage. You saw the total punches in the last round there put up, but the power punch percentage right now is 37%. Jamel Herring has to ask himself, what is he willing to live with? Is he willing to live with being on the outside of those punches that are not going to stop coming and maybe at some point start looking for a way out or maybe get caught by a big shot? Or is he going to fight fire with fire and do what he told us he was going to do and try to back Shakur Stevenson up and try to rough him up and land a big shot? What is Jamel Herring willing to accept tonight? And right now we're seeing some inflammation under the left eye of Jamel Herring, and that's going to be something they're going to have to contend with in the corner. You see, this is the fight that I knew that Shakur Stevenson had in him. I know he can stand his ground. I know he can fight well in the inside, and he's showing us a different dimension of his skill set. He can do it all. Finding those levels, too. Look at that four-punch combination. Then goes down to the body with a jab. Then back upstairs with the left hand. Three-punch combination to the head. Shakur is in rhythm here in Atlanta. Look at this work. This looking like Gotti Floyd right now. Yes, it this is. This looking like Floyd May Mayweather, Arturo Gotti right now, where you thought the bigger guy was going to going back the smaller guy up but the smaller guy has a lot more physical strength a lot more prowess and a lot more punching power than you thought Heron ain't gonna lay down though I'm letting you know that right now he's a marine he's gonna fight back and I see him he's trying his spots right now he's taking those steps forward that's what that's he needs what he to, has do. to do has to that's take what he has steps to forward do. to have any chance at all no other no chance to win standing on the outside of those shots he's got to he let his shots go fires off the left hand behind it. Nobody said it would be easy, Jamal. But you got to go forward if you want to get it done. And the game plan for Team Herring is also to try to take Shakur Stevenson into the deep rounds because they feel like he's got conditioning issues. He's never been in a tough fight. So that's also the game plan. The fight is starting to break out now. Isn't it? Yes, it is. Herring's not backing up, and Shakur's still giving. Neither Shakur. Shakur's standing right. in his ground right now, backing up when he needs to, and then stepping inside. Right in the center of the ring. Right on that Crawford Porter signage for their big pay-per-view coming up on November 20th as Bud Crawford sits ringside. Time. Joe, Tim, and Trey on the call here from Atlanta. Shakur Stevenson has a 59 so 21 connect advantage over the champion, 
Jamel Herring as we begin round number four. Bomack also said to Jamel, it has to be more than one punch at a time. Bernardo. On the other side, Wally Moses, who's the grandfather and trainer of Shakur Stevens, said, I don't want him to allow Jamel to move to his right. I want him to keep him moving left and to continue digging to the body. We will look for that. Now you see Jamel trying to march forward. He's kind of gotten over that third, those three rounds of shock that he experienced. And now he's starting to try to implement the game plan that he talked about in the beginning, which is march forward behind the right jab and put pressure on Shakur Stevenson. And he's doing the right thing because he's moving to his left. He's cutting off that angle for Shakur Stevenson that he's used to. And he's making him and trying to force him right. Bomack, the trainer of Herring, the champion. Excuse me, my correction. Herring needs to push Shakur Stevenson to his left. Keep him from going right. Stop, don't punch. Be careful. Get your head up. Step back. Step back. And right jab is the best thing. Jamel Herring has going for him. That's the only shot he has to actually walk forward and actually get those power shots off that he wants to. If he tries to load up and lead, he's going to get countered. If he sits on the outside, he's going to get picked apart. He's got to get the right jab going to try to push Shakur Stevenson back. Here Just like the, that. Here comes the left hand. You knew it was coming, doubling up that right jab. Tough target to hit, though, is Shakur. Always has been. You're right, Dre, that jab is causing some problems for Shakur Stevenson. Oh, nice shot right there. Lifted him with the right hand. And that got Jamel Herring's attention. As it should. Off angle, didn't matter. Well scored by Stevenson. World title on the line. Stevenson off to a great start. Time. Round number five of our world title fight. Shakur Stevenson with a 73 to 30 advantage in total connects. In the locker room is Jamel Herring's wife, Jen. She has not come out to watch this ringside. Has her head turned right now. Obviously, her husband has quite the uphill battle to try to defend his title here tonight with the way Stevenson is off to this strong start. Great, no, 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 no. come on, let, let go, let go. Come on, don't grab, Jamel. Just box. Aaron's doing a good job behind that jab of his. Landing it on Shakur. That's been the difficult thing task for any fighter. Whoa. Shakur turned him around and now the headshots come in. Able to get around the guard of Herring. Great, don't punch. Keep your hands free, guys. Get out of there on your own. All right, break. I got it. Shakur looking more comfortable right now, staying in the pocket. Get your hands free. Blocking and picking off break. some of the punch. shots from Shakur, from Jamel Herring and also showing that he's also strong and he can manhandle Jamel Herring and then countering shots on Jamel just like that. That's discouraging for Jamel Herring because nothing is working at the moment. Hands free, guys. Oh, nice. That's what he has to do. Right hand yes. inside. Has to be willing to just hit him and hit him anywhere and take some chances, especially when you can smother him. 
That's and he just did. Left hand came in against Stevenson. And he goes right back into the kitchen again and lands to the body, does Herring. His best stretch of the fight. Watch your heads. You can see swelling around the left eye. That straight left hand down on the inside. Shakur Stevenson needs to be careful. He needs to time that perfectly because he's leaning right in. The line of fire for the left hand of Jamel Harry. Hands free, guys. Get out of there. Freak, I got it. It's a really good round for Jamel Harry. Yeah, he landed a lot of leather, just like we see right here. He fainted down and went up top with an overhand left, came back, missed the right, but then landed the left, and then walked down Jamel and landed another left as he pushes Jamel Herring back to the rope. Shakur had a 16 to 12 connect advantage in that last round. 13 of the 16 connects were power punches. Hands free, guys. Get out of there. Don't no, break. Hold on. Don't, don't, don't break. The whole time in the fighter meeting yesterday, good jab right there from Jamel Herring. Team Herring said they want, they don't believe Shakur St Stevenson had the dog guys. in him. They don't believe if he's pushed to a certain point that he's going to respond. We get to see if he responds right now. You have to push him to that point. You have to execute on that plan to get the answer. Well, we see Jamel slowly trying to do that. He hasn't fully executed, but you see him trying. Ooh, head, head clash. Clash of heads there. Watch your heads, you okay? No. Oh. Hands free, guys. Mean two piece right there. Timed Both it. of them landed. But the frustrating part, fellas, is not the two piece. It's when you think you're going to get something back, and the distance and the range and the legs of Shakur Stevenson won't allow you to get back. That's discouraging, fellas. That's demoralizing. Step back all the way. Jamel Herring has to free that one hand, his right hand, or his right arm, and just let both shots go. Ooh, he heard Shakur him with that may shot. throw, right, but he's got to throw. Scored well by Stevenson right there. He heard him with that shot. You, you saw Herring off balance for a moment, didn't you, Timmy? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And the reason why that shot hurt him is because he didn't see it coming. Quick right hook. Quick, don't punch, I got it. Step back clean. Right hook does damage in the middle of round six. Oh, ooh. same shot right there. If it's working, why go away from it? Look at the swelling around the left eye of the champion here. Great, I got you. You got to understand that that right hook is Shakur Stevenson's power shot. He's a right-handed fighter. He's right-handed, but he fights in the southpaw stance. What an advantage that is to be able to generate that power as a natural righty, but a gifted and sublimely skilled southpaw in the ring. who has a 102 to 49 connect advantage against the champion Jamel Herring. Yes, the champion, but keep in mind Stevenson, the accomplished Olympian who went on in his 13th fight to win a featherweight championship, said I'm moving up to 130 pounds, 16 and 0, and tonight trying to stay the course to become a two division world champion, and he was the significant favorite. Late money came in at Herring, but Shakur Stevenson, a significant favorite. In the corner, Bo Mack, I asked him, how do you turn things around? He says he has to do what he did in that fifth round. That was his best round. He's got to rough him up, and that's the only chance he has. Okay. Step back. That was his best away. work of the night, hey, Bernardo, that fifth commands, round. Guys, okay? Come on, keep it clean. There's so much skill going on in that ring from Shakur Stevenson. Both fighters, of course, but 
Shakur Stevenson makes adjustments. Yes. You know, that's when you're Get a your top fighter. Free. That's when you're one of the best guys in hands the division free, and in the sport of boxing. He took away the angle from Herring by throwing the right hook towards the area where Get he was there. going. Hands free, guys. That minor adjustment <laughs> is what's winning Shakur Great Stevenson this fight. Yes, yeah, speaking of winning the fight, let's look at Andre Ward's scorecard because it's a pretty easy one to score. The only oh, round you could even consider you, Herring would be the fifth round. Fifth round. That's Absolutely. the only round where he had double-digit connects. He was 12 of 50 still, and Shakur still had seemingly better moments in that round, landing 13 power punches, so it's a clean sweep. Right. Shakur landed the best punch in that round, and he did a little bit more. Jamel came on, but he let Shakur close it just enough where I gave Shakur that fifth round. Jamel trying to get Harry around. Said he, sorry, Mark Nelson. He's trying to get around Mark Nelson and just get after it. Stop. I was going to say that this is where Herring said he wanted the fight. He either wanted Shakur backing up or he wanted him inside right now. Uh, excuse me, Jamel Herring has Shakur where he wants him. He's got to try to take advantage, but Shakur is not playing along. Hands free. See, it's a mean three-piece right there. See, Shakur is a really good inside fighter. And this is what I've been trying to tell people. He's a Get really good Hands inside free. fighter. If he wants to commit free. to it, he can do it. Went into that short Tell back right on your hand pound pound that rolled. <laughs> <laughs> that conversation free. is most likely going to be happening soon enough if he can continue on the path oh he's goodness. been on in his career. Oh. Keep them up, guys. Quick, come on. Keep the punches up. Keep, Stevenson's keep got to stay guys. focused. He can't look at the ref because when he did, Jamel Herring did just what he was supposed to do. He landed a straight left hand. So uh, Muhammad Ali's grandson, Nico Ali Walsh. You can always go to the ESPN app, ESPN.com, to see all the highlights. Watch back the entire fight card. Evander Holyfield's son, by the way, came up a winner earlier tonight here in Atlanta. Round number eight. Team, team Herring has to continue to try to convince him that he can win this fight. Even though he's down on the card, son, you got to keep pressing forward. Remember the game plan. We said he was going to fade late. We'll never know if that's true if you don't let your hands go and start to hit him any and everywhere. Now, these are the no regret moments. Because the alternative is sitting on the end of his punches and getting hit with shots like that. Break, don't punch. Step back. Heron's got to free that hand Step and let back. both hands go. He's only hitting Shakur to the body with the left hand. Free the right hand up and let both shots go. And he needs to shorten his shots too. You know, he's throwing over the head of Shakur Stevenson. Wow, nice combination right up, there. Not everything landed. Get See? your hands free. Overshooting. Out there, what did Shakur Stevenson do? The smartest thing? He go. stepped inside and smothered the backhand of Herring. So the left hand was ineffective there. One time he was able to get to the body. Good sequence with both hands right there from Heron. Yep. He's got to keep that up. Don't punch. I got it. Bad herring is marching forward with no jab. Good herring is j the, j the Jamel herring that's coming forward with the right jab, coming behind that with the straight lefts and the body shots with both hands. He's got to stay disciplined with that right jab. I like the body shots inside from herring. Got to hit something. There's a short right to the body. Good short overhand left. Get your hands free. Step back out of there, guys. All right, break. I got it then. Stevenson won a featherweight title in just his 13th pro fight. Now fight number 17. He's looking to become a two-division world champion. Get your hands free. Step out of there. Break. I got it. Stop. 
next up. Ten seconds, obey the bell. You know, Jamel Herring didn't really fall prey to all the jawing, all the chirping going on throughout the week here in Atlanta. I mean, I think Jamel eked out that last round and maybe Shakur slowed down a bit, but I don't think it's the way Bo Mack is saying, saying it is. But Bo Mack is doing his job. He's earning his money tonight. He has to encourage his fighter and try to make this man believe that he can still win this fight. Jamel Herring has been executing Bo Mack's game plan these last few rounds, getting inside, dirtying it up. But Shakur Stevenson is tougher, rougher, and better inside than anyone thought. That's the way Jamel Heron needs to answer a two, three punch combination from Shakur. He needs to answer with his own two or three punch combination. Shots like that. Break, don't punch. I got it. See, Stevenson has came in here in this fight with a made up mind. He just hurt, he just wow. hurt Heron with that. He hurt Heron with an uppercut. Two more headshots came in as well. Timmy, a few break, years ago, break, you and I were in New York and we were broadcasting a Shakur Stevenson fight. And I remember turning to you and saying, I think I'm starting to see the man strength yes. come out in Shakur Stevenson. Break, Tonight it back, has fully break. arrived. This is a strong, sturdy, thicker version of Shakur Stevenson. And it's at 130 pounds. And he's fighting a bigger... The biggest guy that he's ever faced in his entire career. He's fighting a true 130-pounder in Jamel Herring. Could very well be at 135 pounds. He was. Yeah, exactly. Not just the best. I mean, the biggest, but the best. Yes. The most accomplished as a professional. Gives up three inches to him. A guy who was at a higher weight class to begin with. Step back. Stop. Don't punch. I got it. Step back. Stevenson has let off the gas pedal a bit, and he's finding his opportunities to rest. See him come inside, yep. he Put wants the free. opportunities there, to rest in there. I'll and Jamel Herring's Break. allowing Stop him back. to do that. I don't think he took his foot off the gas pedal. I mean, he's done a lot of good work for three quarters of this round, and he's just trying to see what Jamel Herring is going to do. Bring Jamel Herring Stop. to you and see if he can respond Stop. and if you can... Clean, you know, stuff, land right? a good shot if he overcommits. Make a strategy over anything else. I think it's both. Get your hands free. Mm, he didn't want a Stop. low blow right there. I'll get you. Referee's doing a good job tonight, fellas. He's standing out of the way. That's what I like. I like refs that stay out of the way. That's Mark Nelson, a veteran. We've seen him many times through the years. Shakur Stevenson comes around the guard of Herring, catching him and cut. I think opening his, open up that, that right eye, I believe. Uh, on that punch, in fact, Timmy, another round where Shakur Stevenson lands double-digit power punches. He was 12 of 32 on power punches in that last round. Round number 10 Stop. Stop. for the Tony, WBO 130-pound title. I'm going to have a look at the cut, baby. Ringside position is going to look at this cut on the right eye that just opened up in the last round. It's good. I just don't know where it is. I want you to just look at it. Dr. Jeff Traub has the duties with the Georgia Commission. We're good? Okay. Neutral corner. Time in. Not sure if that little rest is going to benefit Jamel Harry or Shakur Stevenson the most. All I know is Shakur Stevenson see that blood, and I bet you he's going to attack that eye of Jamel Herring. Look at that. It's hard to see, especially when you got blood dripping down the eye. It's in the spot. It's above the eye, so it is definitely blurring his vision a bit, repairing his vision. Now the cut is worsening, and another left hand comes in. And look at these headshots from Shakur. Shakur isn't wasting any energy. He's very efficient. And he's landing clean shots at will right now. Efficient and sharp. So accurate. And doing damage. 
He's got a little bit of an anger to him, too. That's what blood does. That is it. They are waving it off. This is a TKO victory for Shakur Stevenson, and he is a two-division world champion. Referee Mark Nelson calls a stop to this bout at 1 minute 30 seconds of round number 10. For your winner by technical knockout and new WBO Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Shakur we have here. Long range ball. Headshot rings in. It is over. It is over. Dre, where do we begin with Keyshawn Davis when everybody you talk to, all the experts say he's a can't miss five star guy? He's got all the makings of a star, inside and outside the ring. Charisma, smile, he's very conscious of what he's saying to the media, but inside the ring, he's won everything in the amateurs except beat the Cuban. He's beat everybody except the Cuban, and that's going to translate, and it already has in his first couple fights in the pro game. You see it already. You just got to see him evolve, run into those tough moments, which I don't think will be tonight, up the road, and watch how he uh, overcomes, and if he can, it's going to be another pillar. It's going to be another star, another face of the sport in the near future. Well, I'm curious tonight. I know he has a skill, but I'm curious to see if he can get the stoppage against Zaragoza because he's never been stopped. He's been in there, matched pretty toughly with good experience, prospects, top prospects as well. And no one's been able to stop him or figure him out. Zaragoza is 33 years old. Didn't turn to boxing, though, until a couple of years ago. He was a veteran in MMA in kickboxing. But very active with six fights over the course of 2020. And now already his fourth fight in 2021. Zaragoza, he got the memo. His job is to try to make this as ugly and as rough mm. as possible. It's not about skill and looking good and, and flashy. That's not him. He needs to make this ugly and try to land some shots and rough up Davis. And even if he doesn't win, survive and be able to say, I gave him a tough fight. That's a win for Zaragoza <laughs> tonight. See Davis's overall speed there, just offensively, defensively. Look like he tried to set up the left hook to the body. Davis is. There it is. That's where he needs to continue to go, the body. You can hit a, get a guy upstairs all night long, but if you go down to that body, definitely can stop him with a liver shot. There it is. I'll tell you, the left hook upstairs wasn't so shabby either. And now the sweeping right hand. And now he's just finding his spots. Just with the minor level change right there from Davis, he'll just drop his knees. Then he'll faint, and then he'll get outside with the left hook to the body. Oh, nice uppercut. And you hear the thud on that right hand as well. One of the levels you talk about, Tim. Mm. Beautiful distance control right there from young, talented fighter. Total control early on Ooh. with the class of Keyshawn Davis. End of one. In that first round, Keyshawn Davis enjoyed a 26 to seven connect advantage. He landed 16 of his 24 power punches, so the accuracy right on target as well. And it's only gonna get worse from here. 
<laughs> Those numbers are going to get a little bit more gaudy before it all is said and done. Keyshawn Davis, who is now working with B&B &B in Omaha. Bo Mack, Brian McIntyre, and that entire team, of course, famously works with Terrence Bud Crawford, the welterweight champion of the world, who's with Bernardo Ringside. The Bud Crawford stable continues to grow. Terrence, what makes Keyshawn special? Shit, everything. His reflexes, his boxing IQ, his punch selection, no, his no, movement, no, his defense, you know, everything. Tonight, he's catching go, shots. He's in the pocket. Go, Is this greedy. what you saw when you said, come join this crew? Don't get greedy. Oh, man, I've been saw, saw his talent, his skills. Step. When I first uh, seen him fight and when I first got in the ring with him when he was still an amateur. You know, oh so goodness. I've been knowing his talent and his skills for a long time now. Yeah, and he's showing it right now, Joe, with that right uppercut. He sure Everybody. is. Now, it's interesting, as you see, Bud Crawford, who, of course, is coming off of the knockout victory over Sean Porter in that pay-per-view in Vegas. Just a spectacular performance by Bud Crawford yeah. there. And look at him working this left hand. But, Dre, as soon as Keyshawn Davis went over to work with Bo Mack, it was Bud who said, all right, come on, you're getting in with me right away. We're going to go. And they did three four-minute rounds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what time it is. When you're the big dog in the stable and you got the young pup that comes in and he's saying that he's going to be the next one, you got to fill him out. You got to let him know what time it is. A, you want to see what he has, but then you want to let him know what level you're at and the level he needs to reach for. What you're seeing is a young man that's in total control of the ring, dominating every aspect of the ring. He's doing exactly what he wants to do. Oh, my goodness. Look at this attack here. And look at how calm and cool and in control he is. Just enough time on the clock for it to get ugly, fellas. Let's see what happens. How does Davis close the show? Nearly clipped him with a big right hand. Oh, body no shot! I mean, on the target, bullseye body shot. Every bit of it. That's it. As they say in the biz, on the button. Damage done. Precision, precise, double uppercut right there. Right up the middle. As you can see, Zara goes and leaning forward. And then there's the follow-up body shots. Here's the end of the fight. Get outside, he sees the liver, boom. Digs the left hand right downstairs behind the elbow of Zaragoza, and down he goes. Liver shot shuts every system down in your body just for a moment. Look at that, getting distance right there. Beautiful job by, and then setting up that left hook. Digging to the liver. My goodness. Digging Listen. to the liver. Oh, and did you hear it? Ladies and gentlemen, here inside Madison Square Garden, referee Charlie Fitch calls a halt to this bout at 2 minutes, 51 seconds of round number two. For your winner by technical knockout, Keyshawn, the businessman, David! Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. God bless you both. Touch up. Russell Moore, the referee. For eBay, it's his fourth consecutive bout inside this MGM Grand Bubble. Joe Tessitore ringside with Tim Bradley, Andre Ward, and our ace reporter, Bernardo Asuna. Mark Kriegel is the label of next great American heavyweight too much too soon on Jared Anderson. No, what's the biggest problem in boxing? Fighters you don't know, fighters you don't care about. For Anderson, the hype 
The idea of being the next great American heavyweight becomes his identity. That's a good thing. Big fighters need big expectations, fellas. Dre, he says it's a good thing that it has become his identity of being the next great American heavyweight. When we visit with him, we constantly walk away saying he feels very comfortable, very secure, very contented. He's got a good way about him. He does, and he looks very content, very comfortable in his first round. But to your point, you know, he's got a, he's got a polarizing personality, big smile, and a lot of skill to go with it. Right now, what I love from Anderson is, is his concentration right now. He has his eyes focused and sealed on eBay because he understands what he's up against. He understands that eBay has some power to hurt him. eBay's last fight was in early October right here at the MGM Grand Bubble. It was a six-round draw against the 2016 Italian Olympian, the undefeated pro prospect, Guido Vianello. Mm. Oh, there's an exchange, and eBay came with a straight left hand as they opened up. Anderson goes to the body with the jab. This is not supposed to be an easy fight for Anderson. This is the fight that he wanted. eBay's a guy who doesn't have a lot of boxing experience, but that's what makes him dangerous. He's crude, he's awkward, and he's willing to fight. So let's see how Anderson responds to some early adversity. And to add on that, Dre, he's, he's very untraditional, you know, like... He throws punches at odd angles. See him switch from southpaw to orthodox right in front of Anderson. Then all of a sudden he'll just explode with a big shot. So you can see blood coming from the nose of Kingsley eBay. As Jared Anderson able to get that right hand in against the big he heard him six foot four, 276 pounder. He Anderson goes to the body, goes back up top with a right hand. Anderson with the exception of the one shot he got caught with is looking very sharp in this first round. Significant amount of blood now coming from the nose of eBay. And all of this is happening because Anderson has been disciplined with his left jab, his lead hand. There it is. But that's what there it is. Return fire from eBay. That's what he's got to be careful for, that wide, awkward shot that eBay loves to throw. Out of nowhere. If I'm Anderson right now, I'm going to be very selective with my shots. Anderson is getting comfortable head hunting, but the body is what he needs to work. Work the body, bring those hands down on the big man, and break him down. Good start for the 21-year-old undefeated Jared Anderson. Jared Anderson outlanded Kingsley eBay 27 to 6 in that opening round. He was 14 of 25 on his power punches, Tim. Yeah, check out these combinations that Anderson was able to land. Right hand beautifully timed the jab of Ive. That's why he was able to land that shot. And again, a slapping right hand right there and a nice jab to follow up. Ebay defensively is not, not that sound defensively, you know. He's a guy that doesn't have a whole lot of experience. He's just a, an explosive fighter in spots. So Anderson needs to be careful in there and be selective with his shots like he's doing right now. Dre, Tim mentions the lack of overall experience for Kingsley eBay, limited as a boxer, but a former football player, and he's got that build. Yeah, but a guy his size, it, that makes him dangerous. What he doesn't know makes him dangerous because he's not getting caught up in this skill game. He just wants to d d duck his head and land a big shot. And for a young fighter early in his career, that could be problemsome. So he's got to, and I'm talking to Anderson, just has to be disciplined and patient, like Tim said. And then he could potentially get the knockout. It's interesting we saw the corner of Jared Anderson. Bernardo, it included the pound-for-pound pound number one fighter in the world, Bud Crawford. What are they saying? Well, Daryl Riley said, I know that Jared sees the openings I'm seeing, but I need him to settle down, don't rush, take his time, and break him down. Dre, something that you were mentioning in that first round. Well, he's going to have to do, yeah, he's gonna have to do that. To, to soundly beat a fighter like eBay without your feet. taking any crazy risks. Like, you can get the job done impressively without getting hit with the wild shots that he's been hit with so far. And he's only gotten caught with two shots, but they were big shots. There's that steady work with the jab. But I do think the first round for Anderson was almost was nearly a perfect round for him. Little anxious, but everything else was clicking. Mm. 
Off balance that time as he missed with the right hand. eBay tried to come back with a right of his own. But Joe, that right of his own, that, those are the kind of wild shots right. that I'm alluding to. Awkward, off balance, non-conforming, constantly switching stances is eBay. Yeah, he broke a rule. You're not supposed to throw a shot from that angle, but he throws it. Kingsley Ibe, originally from Africa, came to the United States at 16 years old. Talk to us about how long it's been since he's seen his brother and his mom in the course of the past 10 plus years. Was a college football player at Washburn University. Had a cup of coffee with the Calgary Stampeders in the CFL. Coming to the end of two. First two rounds in the bank for the undefeated Jared Anderson, the Toledo native who moved to Houston, Texas just before the holidays. Trains down there with Daryl Riley and Kay Karoma. Through two rounds, Dre, he's landing 48% of his jabs. Yeah, that's the most important punch in boxing, and that's the most important punch for Jared Anderson tonight. See this left hand that you see right here? This won't get you on a Sports Center top 10, but it will set up the punch that will get you on a Sports Center top 10. So he's got to stay disciplined with that left jab for the duration of this fight. You see the little antics for both fighters, both guys trying to figure things out, but, you know, Anderson is systematically beating on eBay, slowly breaking them down. Starting with that jab. Well, that's what he told us, and I'm talking to Anderson. In the fighter minute, he said, I want to break down the mind of eBay, and then the body will follow. And that's exactly what he's doing right now. Minute into round three, his average fight is 1.7 rounds. His longest fight to date for Anderson was 222 of round number four. Those seven total fights have lasted 12 rounds. And to that point, Joe, because Anderson hasn't gone a lot of rounds and hasn't been in a real tough fight yet, it's imperative that he stays focused and doesn't fall asleep because eBay is looking for a big shot. Just like you see right there, he's ducking down, he's looking, he wants Anderson to make a mistake. Anderson has to stay focused for the duration of this fight. And I believe that Anderson is, and that's the reason why you're seeing the single jabs by him. He's trying to get eBay to throw and get off balance so he can catch him on the way in. Watch your feet, watch your feet. eBay smiling, saying, please just make a mistake so I can let this left hand go. <laughs> Look at that. Perfectly placed right hand down to the body. Now Anderson saying, hey, you going to switch southpaw? I can switch southpaw too. Now eBay back to orthodox. Mm. Good That's shot. exactly what he was setting up right there. Looking for eBay to expose himself with his offense and then boom, make him pay. That shot knocked eBay back southpaw. <laughs> <laughs> See that blood continuously coming from the nose of eBay. That started halfway through round number one. And a big smile on the face of the undefeated 21-year-old Ohio native. Jared Anderson, mm. oh, to be 21 years old and in a cash-heavy heavyweight division and a very top-heavy division that we will talk about when we return. All the time, anytime he wants to. I see later in this fight, I see the right hand coming over the top and the right hand in the left hook possibly finishing eBay. Joe, Tim, and Dre with you here ringside as we get a peek at 7-0 Jared Anderson. You mentioned the jab. He has landed 35 of 81 thrown. Round number four scheduled for six. Remember, the longest fight he has had to date is 222 of round number four. You see the total jabs that we mentioned through three rounds and total punches. He's out landing eBay 65 to 12. Dre, this heavyweight division, obviously, you sit back at 21 years old, you got time, you got time. In the lower weight classes, we're going to have a visit with Tiafimo Lopez. You got an undisputed champion at 23. <laughs> but here you got time because sitting there is Tyson Fury. 
and Anthony Joshua. And we know that soon we expect for an official word that they will be fighting in late spring, early summer, and possibly two fights. And there's Deontay Wilder still out there, and Andy Ruiz making a comeback in familiar names like the veteran Pavetkin and Parker and Usyk, who's a cruiserweight undisputed champion, moving up to heavyweight. He can take his time and put bricks in the foundation. Yes, he can. And the beautiful thing about the heavyweight division is even though it is top heavy, there's a lot of top contenders that a young fighter can work his way to, you know, big name guys within the sport where they can make a decent amount of money, keep sharpening their skills and prepare for when that moment comes. A yeah, decent amount of money. Have you been reading the headlines as to what they think Fury and Joshua could be pulling down? No, I have not. Oh, well, <laughs> that's Mayweather money. <laughs> Widely reported that Fury and Joshua will fight for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world come late spring. See, I think in these situations right here, the onus is on Jared Anderson because nobody expects eBay to win this fight. But the world is watching Anderson saying, show us something. Give us a reason to get behind you. Give us a reason to support you. So sometimes winning is not just enough. Yes, be smart, but he wants to make sure he closes the show in the right way. It's time for a changeup. You know, he's got him used to the jab. Lead with the left hook as opposed to the jab. And I'm talking about for Anderson, that's what he should do. Because eBay's doing what he's supposed to do. He's surviving right now. He said, hey, you won't do anything, I won't do anything. Mm. Back here live in Vegas, strong night of action on top rank, Richard Comey, the former lightweight champion who was knocked out by Tiafimo Lopez 14 months ago makes his return. It comes in our main event later tonight against Jackson Marinez. We also have Adam Lopez and Jason Sanchez in a very important 10-round featherweight fight. And you see right there Comey in the locker room. He had a visit with Tiafimo Lopez who is here ringside. We will hear from the undisputed champion in just a little bit. This is round number five. The undefeated Jared Anderson in complete control. He has outlanded Kingsley eBay to this point, 79 to 15. Tess, I like what I'm seeing from Anderson. You know, he's been very patient. You know, these are growing pains for him. Not a, not a problem. You know, this is the longest I've seen him in the fight. eBay is not a not a not an easy guy to fight face, man. You know, he's a guy that has punching power. He's a guy that explodes at any moment with a shot. Anderson is doing the right thing, using his jab, staying composed, and just waiting on the right opportunity to land the shot. It is now the longest fight of his career, Timmy, as we're here into round five. When eBay's on the ropes like that, trying to rest and buy time, I think that's a good time for Anderson to pick up his left hand, pick up his jab, not just to the head, but to the body. Stab him to the body, steal win from him, and send a message to eBay that I'm not going to let you rest. Yeah, I'm going to be smart, but I'm going to steal win if you want to sit on these ropes like that. And to add to that, I believe that he needs to add some more feints to his game as well. You know, get eBay to commit off the feints. You see in the corner of your screen what's coming up a week from right now, and that is Miguel Burchelt against Oscar Valdez in what is one of the most anticipated Mexican versus Mexican warrior fights we've had in some time. You know the great history and tradition of those countrymen fighting through the years. Five times in the last 20 years, the fight of the year has been between Mexican fighters, and that world championship fight at 130 pounds will be on ESPN next week. And look at Jared Anderson. Anderson doesn't really fight like a heavyweight. No, he doesn't. He's like a middleweight trapped in a heavyweight's body. He's got that mentality of quickness, speed, and flair. He doesn't lumber around like a typical heavyweight. Mm. Decent shot from eBay right there that right raised hand. the temple of Anderson. Well, that is something that is said of the number one heavyweight in the world as well, Tyson Fury, who at six foot nine, two hundred and seventy plus pounds, is often mentioned as a guy who yes. fights and has the agility yes. and nimbleness of a middleweight. And it was Jared Anderson who was his chief sparring partner when he got ready for Deontay Wilder. 
Yeah, I think Fury's a light heavyweight trapped in a heavyweight's body. Back here live in Vegas, sixth and final round in our heavyweight opener. Jared Anderson has been in complete control, dominating Kingsley eBay. 7-0, 21-year-old heavyweight prospect. Could be his first distance fight. Seven knockouts in his seven wins. You know, if there's nothing there for a fighter when he's dominating, keep doing what you're doing and get the decision win. But if there's opportunity to step it up and close the show, you should do that. And I think there is opportunity for Anderson. He has to be smart, and I can't say that enough, but there is opportunity. Just tagged him with a right hand. eBay is coming forward now. Perhaps that's where the opportunity comes for. That right uppercut to the body from Anderson was mean a few seconds ago. Two-punch combination from Jared. So you see the reaction from eBay. He's starting to break him down. That's what I mean when I say there's opportunity. Don't let him sort of, you know, steal the fight by just, you know, going the distance yeah. by kind of staying on the ropes and making you think he's going to do something. Press him and make him prove it. What you're saying is, is that he just need to get a little bit more consistent with his jab and start piecing punches together instead of throwing one shot at a time. And Anderson will be in range to get hit. Just like he's his, doing here. His offense is a lot more explosive than eBay's. Just like, just as he's doing right here. Needs to keep piecing them together. Significant amount of blood now coming from both the nose and the mouth of Kingsley eBay. Halfway through the sixth and final round, can Jared Anderson keep the knockout streak alive? Three punch combination. Jeez. eBay's ready to go. You just got to give him a little help. Push him out the door, Andre. More work from that jab of Anderson. Good shot. Russell Mora Man. is telling Kingsley eBay, you got to show me something. He's thinking about stopping the oh fight with goodness. the damage eBay is taking. Big guy, former football player, 6'4", 276, and he's absorbing a lot of punishment. And a big left hand will end the night. Jared Anderson, 8 for 8, explosive finish. He's still out, Joe. He's still out. Hurt bad. You know, Anderson being very smart right there, feigning before he actually attacked. Nice block right there and came back with offense and caught him with a nice, beautiful short left hook in the inside right on the chin. eBay was, was pretty much ready to go, you know, and we said early on that he had to get a little more consistent with his offense, and if he gets a little bit more consistent with his offense, he could get the stoppage. Yeah, he closed the show just like we said, and you could see in the eyes of, of eBay that he was ready to go, but, you know, he's been around the game long enough to, to know how to survive, and Anderson didn't give him that opportunity. A great step back, beautiful right hand to the top of the head, and a left hook that literally turned the lights out of eBay. That was the Sports Center type 10 shot. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside MGM Grand, this bout comes to a stop at 2 minutes, 19 seconds of the sixth round. For your winner by knockout, Jared, the real big baby, Anderson. Eight no, eight knockouts. Madness. Number one in the BO, number one in the WBA, number three in the IBF. It's all straight ahead for him. A hug with pound for pound elite. Bud Crawford, the welterweight champion of the world for Shakur Stevenson. Guevara accepted the challenge. Others backed out. The undefeated Shakur Stevenson. Here's the next step. Joe Tessitore, Tim Bradley, and Andre Ward, who is a co-manager of Stevenson. Obviously, the career insight you can offer here as to what the future will hold if 
he can pass this test. Here we go. Round number one. Guevara is a sturdy fighter. For those who know their boxing history, he fights like or tries to fight like Juan <laughs> Manuel Marquez. He has that high left guard out there. He did take the fight on short notice. You can see the midsection is a little soft. Shakur has to overcome the early jitters of fight that home and wanting to over it to be overly impressive and establish his jab if he's going to have success against a veteran like Guevara. Yeah, fighting at home, you have to learn to control your emotions. You can't get beside yourself and get out of your element and be something that you're not. You know, Shakur has always set up his attack off the jab, and it seems like he's trying to get after it right away. He was so impressive at Madison Square Garden when he took a step-up fight against Diaz, a guy who had just fought for a world title, a rugged veteran who was so capable, and he completely outclassed him. Guevara told us in the fighter meeting yesterday that he wants to press Shakur, he wants to stay in his chest, he wants to work the body. All the things that opponents say when they're facing a great boxer, easier said than done. You see the straight left hand down to the body for Shakur. That's going to be his money punch. You know, Guevara doesn't really, he's a counter puncher, so he likes to set up his attack, and he has a sneaky overhand right that Shakur has to be aware of. And you called him out at the fighter meeting as well. You said, well, you're not really a pressure fighter. You're a counter puncher. <laughs> right. He tried to explain himself, but you're right. His nature is to stay on the back foot and to counter his opponent's mistakes. Two times he has fought for world titles, Guevara. That was at Bantamweight, November 2013. Lost by ninth round KO to Yamanaka. And in December 2012, he lost to Leo Santa Cruz. That was a 12-round unanimous decision. Of course, Santa Cruz now a titleist in the WBA in this weight class, featherweight. Shakur is going to have to be the aggressor, and he knows that right away. He wants to be aggressive. He wants to be aggressive. Guevara was getting on his bike and bagging up. He didn't like the body shot. He didn't, like, he didn't like there. that body shot at all, Tim. He didn't like that one either. Boy, he can go from distance, can't he? The southpaw. Overly athletic Shakur Stevenson and sublimely skilled. Trying to cut off the ring. Chase down Guevara. Guevara lunged in twice already. Look for Shakur to step back and make him pay. He'll have to with those limited opportunities that Guevara may offer up. And here he comes forward. Guevara's going to have any chance on getting in against a guy like Shakur Stevenson. He's going to have to use his jab. And yes, you can use your jab against a southpaw. Lunging in like he just tried to, it's not going to work. And there is Shakur chasing him down with that southpaw jab. Shakur stung him with that left hook, that right hook. Electric atmosphere here in Newark for their native son, Shakur Stevenson. First time in his professional career he fights in his hometown first time that he headlines his own nationally televised fight card and he's looking to make a statement here he did so with 39 percent of his total punches landed in that first round according to CompuBox Guevara who did not initiate much of anything in that first round as he was being chased down for most of it circling out only landed one punch in that first round we talk about the ego of the fighters, but trainers have egos too. It takes a rare guy to do what Kay Karoma is doing for Shakur. He trains Shakur with Wally Moses, his grandfather. He trains Michaela Mayer with Al Mitchell. He's known Shakur since he was 16, but he's that rare trainer who doesn't need the spotlight. Kay Karoma, the 39-year-old, he is the assistant coach for Team USA. He's a likable, mature, very calming force for so many pros that we see as we go week to week around the country. See, the thing that I'm most impressed with Shakur Stevenson, the reason why I'm so high on him is, is that he's a master at distance already with 11 fights. This is 12 fight right now. You know, he knows how to extend with his punches. He knows what position to be in. This is a sweet science of boxing. And he doesn't get hit that often. Now, he is a master of the hit and don't get hit game, of the sweet science of the sport. But to your point of his ability at range, I mean, watch how that left hand can land to the body when you think that he's out at distance. Guevara's getting hit with that straight left to the body because he's standing straight up. He, he's almost freezing right now. Like, he, he doesn't have any answers. It's unnerving to miss a big shot and then to see your opponent 
right in front of you. You try to throw again, you miss, and then he hits you with a shot like he just landed right there. Another body shot from Shakur. Guevara's in survival mode already. You know. Here's Stevenson now. As he's able to pin him against the ropes and gets off scoring two punches. Guevara's going to have any shot to have any success. He's going to have to answer those attacks by Shakur Stevenson to get some respect because right now, he's Body not shot up. landed again. He went down on that one. That is a knockdown scored here in round number two. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, Bubba, tell me in. Final half minute of round two after the body shot was effective. And now patient as he looks to place a left hand to that right flank again. Guevara just wants to get through this mm. second round here. Stevenson closes the gap. Straight left to the body again. That has been the punch of choice. He gets him against the ropes and he goes down again. Closing seconds of round two, second knockdown score. The bell rings, ending round two. Shakur Stevenson in complete control. Shakur Stevenson, look at those eyes. Focus, laser focus. He's having his way. And great boxers, they measure twice, cut once. But when we get the sense, and when they get the sense that you don't have anything for them, you'll see a different individual. You saw the body punch numbers, according to CompuBox, 14 to two. But those 14 did enough damage to score the two knockdowns in that last round. And now look at Shakur. Here he comes, showing what he's all about, putting on a show for these home fans. The homecoming here in Newark, the return. So many veteran fighters didn't want this challenge. Pulled out of the fight, others said no. Guevara said yes, and now he's finding out why some turned down the invitation. It's no fun, Joe, when you're getting hit and you can't get anything back. It's no fun at all. That's why a lot of fighters don't want to fight Shakur and don't like to fight yep. master boxers because they want a 50-50 contest. You hit me, I yeah. hit you, let's yeah. see what happens. And when it's 80-20, 90-10, nobody really wants to deal with that. Yeah, and learning the sweet, uh, sweet science of boxing improves your quality of life after boxing. That's what we need to understand, and it also shows us that in the history of boxing, the top fighters in the game, they knew the sweet science. And it's appreciated. And I appreciate Oh, there's that long like range this. left hand again. And that one, he's saying, went low. David Field says that was low. And let me tell you, you know how Guevara's gonna play this. He's gonna want every opportunity. You be the judge. Is it the belt line or is it low? Right on the T right and the, the R of line. Metro. Like it's right on the belt line. But you need to understand that all that all jiggles all down there, man. That, it, it does affect you and hurt you. Well, it affects you and hurts you, but it ain't in the parts that hurt you more. Yeah, yeah. that was belt line, borderline low. Yeah. But the referee yelled. He didn't get in there. So Shakur did what he was supposed to do. He followed up. Back to action now. Caparo is squatting and taken. And now he tries to fire back and is off balance in doing so. No knockdown. Go on, back Shakur back wants back. the highlight reel knockout right now. You can tell if he's going to get that, he's got to go to the body, but then come right back up to the head. But the going down to the body, Dre, is going to bring the hands down of Guevara. And it's going to leave his head exposed. Oh, there it is upstairs! Shakur floors him again! He may not beat the count! It's a knockout victory! Newark's own homemade, homecoming, home run, Shakur Stevenson! You see the body shot, right, left, then the combination to the head of three-piece. And Guevara just had a decision to make. He said, man, I'm getting hit to the body. I'm getting hurt to the, bo to the body. Now I'm getting hurt to the head. It, it, it all of a sudden doesn't make sense for a fighter when they're getting punished like that with both hands. That was a left hand that came up from that angle to the head. There was a little body shot mixed in there as well. But what I like about it is, is that he put them together in threes and fours, and he sat down on those punches. They weren't slapping punches. 
They were hard, sit down type of punches. And he turned them punches over and he got Guevara up out of there. They are going to be partying deep into the night with the homecoming. Their superstar returns. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, 37 seconds in round number three. Our referee in charge, David Fields, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout. He is still undefeated and still the NAB All Featherweight Champion, Fearless Shakur Stevenson. With the pillow in hand. Madness. we have here. Long range ball. Headshot rings in. It is over. It is over. Tessa Tor, did they both look 6-4 to you when they stood face to face? You know, it's interesting because Jared looks so much bigger. Bigger, right? Mm -hmm. But you look over at Teslenko, and he's only 213 pounds, but it is on a tall frame. Mm. Aronson goes 240. Anderson choosing to come out in a southpaw stance. I told you he's ambidextrous. He can actually fight both ways, orthodox or southpaw. That was a left hand to the body, left hand upstairs as well. Very accurate early on from oh. that southpaw stance. Teslenko comes firing back. Right hand to the body from the Ukrainian. Teslenko has a great right hand, a quick on the trigger with it. He, he does it upstairs and he does it downstairs, as you can see. Think about that European styles. They don't cock the right hand. They just shoot it right where it is. And oftentimes, American fighters aren't ready for it because they're used to seeing it before it comes, not when you're facing a guy with this kind of ability. Nope. There it is again. Ooh. Comes at short range. That last shot from Anderson got Tess Linko's attention for sure. Yeah, that right hand. As many of his right hands... Uh, left hand, as many of them do. I don't think Teslenko planned that he's going to be facing the southpaw. But the good thing, and to his credit, is he does have an extensive amateur background. Oh. Ooh, Jared got him caught right there. Yeah, when he crosses that threshold to the inside, that's happened twice now. I like what Anderson is doing. He's not just reaching for the head. He's taking that left hand straight to the solar plex of Tess Linko. You can also see some red on that spot, Dre. USA chant has started up here at Madison Square Garden as this place is now filling up in anticipation for Lomachenko and Comey. Anderson just better Anderson. be careful not to walk in, straight in. Yes. That right hand yes. is waiting on him of Teslenko. There it is. Combination from Jared Anderson sends Teslenko back. So you say the opportunity exists for Teslenko, but you see the power and the skill of Anderson. Fun to have the heavyweights in the ring at MSG, isn't it? Boxing back in the big room. Good finish by Anderson at the end of one. With nine knockouts. But based on this year, 6-0 this year, and sensational every time out, Tim, many believe he will be named prospect yeah, of the year. Yeah, no doubt in my mind he is going to be prospect of the year. And you got to account also for the age of the young man. Not only is he busy, but he's a young, young prospect. 
and putting on performances like that. I mean, it was a well-matched fight, don't get me wrong. But the way he did it is what impressed me most. Hey, Timmy, I thought Keyshawn was a prospect of the year. No, not, not, not yet. He's in my top oh, ten already. Okay, all right. I can just, I'll let you know that. All right, thank <laughs> you, man. Just get it straight. In that first round, Jared Anderson had a 30-10 to 10 connect advantage. Anderson's corner told him to settle down. And that, that, those were the right instructions because he took some unnecessary shots. Teslinko's not a guy that you just don't respect. So you see Anderson being a little bit more deliberate this round. And you see the payoff. He's getting his. Teslinko is not getting his. Heavyweight from Toledo, Ohio, Dre, who has gotten rid of all 10 opponents. Well, I could tell right away Anderson definitely watched some film. We talked, we discussed it a little bit in the fighter meeting. And I said, well, well, champ, what did you see? And he said, well, he does have some heart. And I said, I don't think so. Right hand, left hand, Teslinko crumbles to the ground. Yep. It is over. I mean, that was pure power from Jared Anderson. 11-0. 11 knockouts. Just taking his time, taking his time, jabbing, blinding Teslinko. So he landed that big shot. That shot, he threw that shot in the first round but wasn't able to land it. Here we see again, just a flick. Eyes closed from Teslinko. He thought another jab was coming, but it was a right hand to the temple. And then you see the big man go down, and you see Anderson. He just test Linko. He could. He got up, but he was done. And that was a great stoppage from the referee. But again, it was set up. It was intentional, and he was mindful about what he was doing. And this is the kind of result you get. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside Madison Square Garden, referee Danny Schiavone calls a halt to this bout at one minute thirty-three seconds of round number two for your winner by technical knockout. And still junior NABF heavyweight champion, Jared, the real big baby, Anderson! Madness. Hey, ready for that action? We ready? Madness. We going mad. Madness. Yeah. We going mad. Madness. Slugfest we have here. Long range ball. Headshot rings in. It is over. It is over. Okay, gentlemen, you already know the rules. Let me remind you to keep it clean. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. Bernard. Bernard. Bernardo Osuna alongside Timothy Bradley, the former world champion and the future Hall of Famer, Andre Ward here at the Hulu Theater at MSG. And little by little, this place will start to fill up to see the future of boxing do their thing. And tonight, Kelvin Davis, they call him Night Night. He's one of the three brothers, the eldest of the Davis brothers. He was supposed to share the stage tonight with his brother, Keyshawn, who caught a non-COVID virus, he's off the card, and he Work says, hands, no, it's my go. time to shine then. Watch that backhand. Work your head. Stop, 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 stop. Listen, watch the rough out. Watch your head. You know, it's unfortunate Keyshawn didn't get a chance to perform tonight. I was looking forward to seeing him, but, you know, you never want to take a fight when, you, when you're not feeling great. You never, you're a little down and out. You're sick. Oh, oh nice left hand. Drops Philip Carmouche. His glove Three, touched the canvas. You good? See the early power from Kelvin Davis who has put every one of his four opponents now on the canvas. Starts off with a lead left and a short right hand. Does the long and lanky Davis. Davis likes to look for that straight left hand. That's what he typically catches his opponents with. He likes to get in range. He'll flick that right jab just to kind of blind the opponent Ooh. because he's really tall for the weight class. To and land there's that left right hand, and he's down again. He's up against the ropes, helpless. And he does a backflip once the referee, Eric Dali, pushes him off of Carmouche, who is out in the first round. And what an impressive barrage of three punches. <laughs> Woo That's all I'm going to say. That you was know, quick. That's why I didn't say anything else, because I saw what was going to happen. That left hand could not miss. It was finding a home every time he let that hand go. Woo! 
you. You know you've been hit with a good shot and you've been knocked out when you get up and you just you're confused. You think somebody kicked you. You don't know if somebody hit you from outside the ring. The, the opponent's yeah. just looking around like, what happened? Since the first knockdown. A, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You got hit with a straight left hand. Then you got hit with an over left hand. Then you got hit with a right. And then there you go. And you, and you see the work that Kelvin Davis has now been doing with Brian Bomack McIntyre, Red Spikes, Esau Dieguez, the entire Terrence Crawford B&B crew out in Omaha, Nebraska. There's a difference in how he's approaching the game now. Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt. The fundamentals are there. You know, everything was set up off the jab. He landed a straight left hand right down the middle. And he knew he was going to be able to land that punch. He had to be patient. He saw it. Bow. It was over. Dang. I apologize to him for He's the him down. eldest of three brothers. And <laughs> Dre, let's take a look at how this fight ended with that triple left hand that Kelvin Davis was just couldn't miss with we tonight. To, yeah, the night-night punch, which, <laughs> which is the left hand, sometimes straight, like you'll see right here. Boom, right on the chin. It's not hard, but it was very accurate and on the money. Doesn't have to be hard. Here we see right there the reaction from the opponent. The legs did not get tangled. That was all punch from Kelvin Davis. And you see, this is all about positioning. You know, you see the lead foot outside, the lead foot of his opponent setting it up. Beautiful, nice finish, but the follow-up punches right there. I mean, that was probably unnecessary. You didn't have to throw those punches, but you know what? You in the midst of the action. And he wasn't down yet. I mean, he wasn't down yet, yeah, but if the ropes wasn't there, he, he obviously he was actually down. He was actually yeah, down because Davis's the ropes was there. Job I understand is to, that. Is to gauge that. But, <laughs> you know, hey, what, he can come up with a punch and, and hit you with a shot, and then the ref's going to look at you and say, protect yourself at all times. I, I agree 100% wholeheartedly, but I'm just saying, he didn't have to, but he did. I mean, the follow through right there, he wanted to end his life with those punches. And honestly. it was Eric Dali who had to actually pull him off of him, made him do a backflip to say, all right, this fight is done. The official time with Mark Chinook. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden, this bout comes to a conclusion at one minute, 17 seconds of round number one for your winner by knockout, Kelvin Davis. Impressive victory for Calvin Davis, the eldest of the three fighting Davis brothers. His brother Keyshawn was a silver medalist in Tokyo, and he is now with our very own Mark Kriegel to talk about what he thought about his brother's performance tonight. Keyshawn, you told me not to blink. You didn't tell me your brother was working on a triple left hand. <laughs> Man, I told y'all all through camp, man. I've been seeing this man progress all through camp for this month and two-week camp that we had. I feel like each performance is going to get better and better for him. And I feel like y'all got a world champion on your hands. I believe it. I need top rank for the Believe It as well. Okay, gentlemen. From here on up, it's good, okay? Ya tú sabes, aquí para arriba, se puede. Quiero una pelea limpia? I want a good clean fight. Token one thing if you want. Touch goals if you want. Back to your corners. First hometown fight for Bruce Shushu Carrington, dedicating it to Aldin Adzemic, a child who is fighting cancer. And he said, tonight, it's all about him, and it's all about my fans who come out from Brownsville to show out. He did last time out with a brutal knockout over Stephen Brown. It was lightning quick, right, left hook, left uppercut, left hook combination. Didn't even give the referee time to step in and stop that brutality. Well, that's what time it is, Bernardo, for these young guys and really any fighter. You don't get paid for overtime. You don't go looking for the knockout, but if it's there, you're certainly going to take it. And it looks like with the kind of shots that Carrington is landing in this first round, that he may be getting another quick knockout tonight. This young man is special. I'm just going to let y'all know right now. Why is he special? So composed. Young fighter. This is his third professional fight. Always under control. Can fight inside the pocket. Can fight outside. He has extremely long arms mm -hmm. for a 5'8 five, five, guy. Honestly, 72-inch reach. And Duhart does too. 71-inch, but against... Shushu, he's at a disadvantage, and Shushu grew up along Olympians Saddam Ali and Marcus Brown in Brownsville, and he said, I want to be like them. He actually beat Duke Reagan as an eighth seed to, in the qualifiers, but COVID took his dream away to be an Olympian in Tokyo, and here he is as a pro. Took a nice shot there from Anduhar. Oh, he got his attention, too. He was looking like he was mad at himself for a second. 
look, we may have the same reach, but those hands might not move the same. <laughs> <laughs> and that mind, Dre, is a smart kid. Yeah, that man is like, this kid is like a cornerback a with the IQ of Tom Brady. Hey, you know, Shushu's got Brownsville on his trunks. He's just following the footsteps. Tyson, Riddick Bowe, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, Danny Jacobs, that's just boxing. What about Willie Randolph, Fly Williams, and World Be Free? Oh, yeah, Shannon Briggs, too. <laughs> I'm forgetful of my old age. You think that maybe Kriegel's a New Yorker? Uh, yeah, a little bit, right? Oh, nice kind of stick there right. from Carrington. You see the flashy combinations. You see the big single shots from Carrington, but the jab is setting it all up. That's why he's able to eat Ooh, through it. Eat it right now. That uppercut, the body shot, a short right hand from Carrington. And Duhar is going to dig to the body. He really loves to go downstairs, and that's going to be a test for Carrington to deal with. But man, those quick hands and powerful shots that Carrington and Landing are impressive here. And Duhar has to continue to throw that left hook. He's found a home for it once. He can find it again. And Duhar has nothing to lose. He's got to let those shots go. He can't become a spectator and allow Carrington to have his way getting off like this with no answer. Mm, missed nice. a big hook right there. Beautiful right hand to punctuate a solid first round from Shushu Carrington. But Andujar is in this fight. And they made that a purpose to not say anything, to see how he responds during sparring, see if he can figure things out. That's the next level. And uh, I didn't think it was going to be a, a bad thing at all. I think the kid had enough in him to figure things out tonight. We'll see that once we move over to ESPN at 10 p.m. Eastern as Shushu moves in with a very Break nice clean. right hand. Break Thank clean. you. Break clean. Hey, Mick the Quick Rivers. Mick the Quick Rivers. Nice stick there from say? Carrington. Oh, Willie Randolph. Willie Randolph. Bring it up, bring it up. Zab stop, Judah. Stop, 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 stop. A low blow there from Andujar. You good? You good? Raise those hands is what Eddie Claudio, the third man in the ring, asks of Yuri Andujar. But Andujar cannot let that discourage him. He's got to stay downstairs to Tim's earlier point to try to slow down and discourage the faster, quicker, higher IQ Carrington. See, that's the thing. That's the problem with Andujar. He's nice standing. right hand and an uppercut. Yeah, he's standing right there. He needs to pick up his feet. He needs to do something different. I mean, you're standing right in front of a counterpuncher, a vicious counterpuncher like Shushu. That's what's going to happen. You don't get countered every time. So change things up. Use your feet instead. You see Carrington doing damage. And Duhart trying to stand in there and trade shots with Shushu. Carrington is poised. He's looking at the shots. He's rolling the shots. He'll get touched every now and again. That's to be expected when you're that close to a punching Ooh. opponent. But he's landing shots in between the shots of Andujar right there. That's going to discourage him. And if one gets through, this fight might be over. Yeah, and those uppercuts are very vicious shots. And now he adds a left hook. Does Shushu Carrington. He's got every punch in the arsenal. They're fast and they're go, powerful. Go. See, free, but the yes, thing is that he's landing flush. They are landing flush, but the thing is, is that every move that he makes has a purpose. That's the difference. Tactically, this man is fantastic. Woo! Look Rolls at that. and counters does Shushu Carrington there with a little less there. than a minute left in round two. You see that little short body shot? He landed with the right hand in the inside, right in the solar plex. See, when you're so relaxed in the pocket like that, you're able to see openings. Shushu being as young as he is and being as talented as he is, he's extremely relaxed inside the pocket. It's hard to teach. It's got to be very discouraging for the opponent, Andujar, who had Carrington where he thought he wanted him. And then Carrington dominates the inside as well. That's absolutely what Andujar was thinking. I'm going to rough him up. Keep him in close, work the body, and Carrington has an answer for everything so far. Oh, nice stick there from Carrington off the feint. And Duhart trying to rough it up there and gets caught with a left hook. Let's listen in to Kay Karoma in Shushu Carrington's corner. Beautiful. 
down and start stabbing down to the body. Stop doing too many body shots. If you stab down to the right, you're going to get them. Because you're doing it in this way. You don't have jab, box and box. You walk in the center, you're doing good. But you give it, 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 you
Bruce Carrington, but none the less, Tim, none the worse for wear was yeah, Bruce Carrington. I, honestly, I, I didn't think that was, I didn't think he tried to retaliate at all. I think he was in the process of trying to land a punch, which is the left hook. Both guys throwing left hooks and heads coming together. Yeah, the first headbutt was definitely incidental. Second headbutt definitely not a bit intentional from Andy Hall. You thought it was intentional? Second one looked a little bit intentional, yes. Hey, it's the Tim Bradley headbutt standard, though, Dre. It's different. I guess Tim's saying, listen, that's not how you do it. <laughs> well, yeah, I should have asked him during the fight. I mean, he's been watching my video. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's like, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But he doesn't have the bald head, so it won't have the same effect. He's got bread, so. <laughs> Shoot, I, he don't have the muscles on his head either like I do. That's true. <laughs> Carrington <laughs> stepping up for the, for the first time nice. to a six-round fight. This is the fourth round. He's been here before. His first fight was a decision win was Bruce Carrington. So we'll see how he does here as the fight progresses. Nice right hand from Carrington. Yeah, Carrington's not a one-punch guy, knockout guy. You know, he's a... More he has snap on his shots. He can get your attention and get your respect. But he's going to be more a break you down systematically type of guy if he's going to produce knockouts. Not with one punch. But that short left hook and then that big right hand from Shuchu Carrington. And you see Andujar having to hold on dearly to the young man from Brownsville. And Carrington is still young, guys. He's 24 years old. He's going to continue to mature. His punch will get stronger. He'll become more accurate, more skillful, and find better ways to set big shots up. And it's really about the punch that you don't see that gets a mm. fighter out of there. Nice left from Shushu Carrington. Now he digs to the body, right to the body. Carrington now doing work downstairs in round four, changing the focus of his attack. And Andujar does not like his own medicine. He was punching to the body. He got away from it. But now Carrington is doing the favors for him, and he doesn't seem to like it. You see the hands coming down from Andrew Hart, and he's Ooh. not punching. He's more focused on protecting the body. He's giving him that body tussin. Body tussin. Carrington <laughs> going downstairs and staying away from Andrew Hart's counters. And now you see the body language of Andrew Hart changing because of that devastating body work. This kid, this kid. That's what a, that's what a committed body body attack will do, Bernardo, to change the course of a fight within a second. And because nobody likes to get hit down there. Oh my goodness. The body oh. shots is what set up this Look right at here. The legs. And here we see Andujar holding on. Can Carrington put the finishing touches on? A man whose energy he depleted by going to downstairs almost exclusively here in round four. Looking to set up one big shot as Shushu Carrington gets caught with the body shot though. Now a right hand from Andujar. Right hand from Carrington. Andujar now trying to dig deep. Half a minute left here in round number four. Nice jab from Carrington. Kind of shook the legs of Andujar. So now it's time. Andujar can take it and he can dish it. So now it's time for Carrington right now to recover. Through a hellacious combination right there against the ropes. Now it's time for him to play defense. Let Andujar work and then come back. In the tackle. Oh, he's, not, he's not listening to him. Exactly what he's you're seeing listening. right here. Eddie Claudio was so close to stepping in and stopping that fight when Andujar's rear touched that bottom rope. And you see the fans enjoying what hometown fighter Bruce Carrington is doing here. Eddie Claudio says, you don't show me something in this next round, I'm going to stop the fight. Eddie Claudio was having a conversation with Yuri Andujar's corner about stopping the fight if he doesn't show him in something and now he's check getting checked out by the doctor. Do you have any pain? No, I'm good. 
You don't have a headache? No? Okay, you can fight. Fighter gonna lie to you. Absolutely. <laughs> gonna tell you right now. Fighter gonna say, I'm fine, I'm fine. But Eddie Claudio Dre was this close to stopping the fight there at the end of round four. And Carrington is in unknown territory. Never been this far in a fight. All right, this is a good place for him. It's a good place. You gotta touch these waters before you really need to touch those waters in a championship situation or a top contender situation. So you want him to touch the waters on the way up, face some resistance, and he's faced some tonight with Andujar, and he's responding well. Oh, nice uppercut there from Carrington, and Andujar came out firing. He's gonna give everything he's got. The question is, how much more does he have left in the gas tank? Because Carrington has charged up about eight bucks a gallon so far tonight going downstairs. Carrington setting them up. He's looking ugly. That's what he's doing. He's setting them up. He's letting them work. Now he's using the jab, sticking them on the outside, and here comes the counter. Oh, what a left hook! The leg is bent once again from Andujar. What a finish from hometown Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York. Bruce Shoe Shoe Carrington. It's a bad boy right there. That's a bad boy right there. See, we talk about punching power in boxing. Everybody does it. Power's not the same across the board. Sometimes you gotta beat a guy up, and then the power shows up. And that's what Carrington did tonight. He may not be a one-punch guy early in the fight, but he's certainly a one-punch guy. If you let him beat you up to the body and to the head, like Andujar allowed Carrington to do, and then all of a sudden, a two-piece out of nowhere that you don't see, and you're looking up at the All lights. I'm gonna say is this young man bears his teeth and shows no fear, and I love it. Goodness, Bruce Carrington. He comes over as a gentleman to check on Yuri Andujar here to make sure that he is okay. Andujar is still down on the canvas here at uh, the Hulu Theater. You see his eyes are responsive. He's looking at the doctor. Definitely coherent. Yes. Which yeah, is good always to see good. Him. Good to see him moving his eyes. He doesn't seem to be talking yet, but very, very, very tough, tough fighter. Uh, all respect to him. Uh, he gave it all he had for as long as he could. And he just got hit with two punches that he didn't see late in the fight after taking an exorbitant amount of punishment. I mean, he, he put up a great effort, honestly. And Duhar put up a great effort. He came out. He was firing. Let's see him as he stands up here. He was firing back. But I knew Shushu was setting him up. You know, he was, he was doing exactly what I said the round before. Let him throw. Let him wear himself out. Then start placing his shots. Then boom, find a kill shot. That left hook, brutal. Lights I mean, out. He set everything up off the jab from the beginning, yep. but that fourth round, Dre, was a clinic on body work that really set up this knockout because at the start of round five, we knew Andrew Hart was going to come out and throw everything he had. And once that was gone, Carrington put the finishing touches. This is the second devastating knockout in a row from this young man as right, they pray but, for their opponents. But he did it. He, he, he did it with fundamentals, fellas, and he did it by sticking to the script, being himself. He never got out of himself to try to get a spectacular knockout in front of the fans, and he unlocked the key tonight. He unlocked something tonight. He saw that Andrew Har is tough. I've hit this guy with two pieces, three pieces to the head. He keeps coming. In fact, he gets angry when I do that. Let me go downstairs, and when he unlocked that key, that changed the tide of the fight. Andrew Har started to focus, the, focus on the body, and he forgot about the head, and that's when the two-piece landed from Bruce Carrington. Carrington with the sportsmanship over to check on Andujar and Tim. This is how it ended. Look at this. Check this out. The tactical work is how, when, and why you do things. Everything should have a purpose. There's the right hand over the top of the jab. Left hook right on the money, right on the chin. And then you see the defensive effort after the fact from Carrington. Beautiful slip counter right there to the outside. Boom. Let's listen Let's to the inside. it. Let's listen to it in real time because it was devastating. I mean, that's the, the beauty of those shots, Dre, is that you end up looking up at those lights here at the Hulu Theater, and Sushu just shines. Great performance. Great, great performance uh, from Bruce Carrington. Man, it's an understatement <laughs> to say that the sky's the limit. And he's got a huge upside. I just can't wait to see it. Well, he'll be right here on Top Rank Boxing on ESPN, wearing that Mike Tyson type towel uh, I like in, into the ring. I mean, this kid knows what he's doing. He's uh, also memorializing Biggie Smalls, who was shot in Los Angeles on March 1997. He was 
one month away from being born, but he knows the culture. He knows where he comes from. He knows what being from Brownsville means, and that's why he wants to be an example for all those young, ki young kids to have a better life, to be able to follow in his steps and lead a better life. And Bruce Carrington, what a shining example as we send it up for the official time with Mark Chanel. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden, this bout comes to a conclusion at 51 seconds of round number five for your winner by knockout from Brownsville, Brooklyn, Bruce Shoo Shoo Carrington. Only his third professional fight, two knockouts, which are Sports Center top 10 candidates. First, it was Stephen Brown in Tulsa this year, January 29th. Tonight, it is Yuri Andujar. Night, night, says Shushu with that vicious right-left hook combination. Remember the name because he will be around and he'll be disposing punishment or dispensing punishment for years to come.